Rallies organized by the Democratic Socialists of America this week have celebrated Hamas's actions. Why are some Americans thinking this way? To dive into it, we spoke with Alex Newman, an award-winning international journalist and the president of Liberty Sentinel Media. Alex Newman, thank you so much for joining us. Great to have you back on the show. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. Following the horrors coming out of Israel, we're seeing some left-leaning groups cheering on the Hamas terror group. For example, you have BLM coming out in support with pro-Palestine messages. What's the connection? Well, this is actually not a new phenomenon. This has been going on for a very long time. And we know from many high-level Soviet defectors, including uh, Ian Pachepa, who was the head of Romanian intelligence, that uh, the communists had a plan to radicalize and, and further inflame Islamic hatred toward Jews, toward Americans. Uh, in fact, Ion Pachepa, in his book, he quotes uh, Yuri Andropov, the head of the KGB, as uh, explaining that a billion Muslims could inflict far more damage on the United States and uh, its allies than just the communists could alone. So they, uh, uh, he actually estimated, Ion Pachepa, that they had sent in 4,000 uh, KGB and communist agents into the Islamic world to radicalize Muslims, to teach them that the United States was the great Satan and that Israel was the little Satan. And uh, of course, this is a long history in the Arab terrorism directed at Israel. The PLO was actually uh, basically a Soviet front group. Uh, when, when you look at the founding back in the 1960s in Egypt, they didn't even mention Islam. It was all about revolution and Arab revolutionary uh, activities. So uh, this is not a new phenomenon. Of course, the communist Chinese participated in this as well. And uh, you know, that's not to completely deny the influence of uh, Islamic theology in, in a lot of this, but really the, the communist nexus has been there for generations and it should be very obvious to anybody who's looking. And Alex, you actually wrote a book titled Crimes of the Educators, How Utopians Are Using Government Schools to Destroy America's Children. Give us a sense of how this type of indoctrination, if you will, begins in the classroom. Uh, it does, and we see it in the United States, and we also see it very clearly in the Arab world. In fact, the UNRWA, the Relief and Works Agency that, uh, of course, the U.S. government has been funding for many, many years, ha is notorious for producing textbooks that have uh, vile anti-Semitism, that openly call for uh, the elimination of Jews and driving them into the sea. And unfortunately, we're seeing a lot of the same stuff in the United States of America. Um, we're seeing uh, textbooks that portray Israel as uh, as the founder of the Black Lives Matter, Patrice Kelly put it, an imperialist project that needs to be wiped off the map. And of course, uh, this stuff is all um, uh, vile, it's hateful, but it is infecting the minds of young people, not just across the Arab world, but also even here in the United States that we're seeing this now with growing demonstrations in major American cities, growing demonstrations in major cities across Europe. And uh, I, I think people really do need to understand that this kind of hatred is not natural to people. Uh, it, it is being instilled in them through the deliberate efforts of people who hope to inflame hatred, manipulate that hatred for evil purposes. And of course, the hand of the communists has been there all along. And Alex, to your point, we saw 31 student groups at Harvard come out with a letter saying Israel was to blame what's happening there. Now, some of them have retracted their statements following growing backlash. What's your understanding of their motivation? Well, I, I think a lot of socialist and communist groups are, quote unquote, pro-Palestine, just because that's the default socialist and communist position, not just in this country, but around the world. Uh, you see that in, in, in the United Nations very clearly. And so, uh, you know, we see this very clearly on college campuses in the United States. These have really become hotbeds of left wing extremism, socialist activism, communist activism. And uh, it's very, very dangerous. And, and I, I think what happened at Harvard, and this is happening at other major universities all across America, is just the tip of the iceberg. We have a, a growing fervor that aims to dismantle not just Israel, but also the United States and, and really what's left of the free world, what used to be known as Western civilization or Christendom. Uh, this is an orchestrated attack. And, uh, and I think these divisions and this hatred is being fueled very deliberately and very strategically. And speaking of those divisions, even in the case of Harvard, we're seeing thousands of students, alumni, faculty pushing back in their own letter with all of these divisions we're seeing across campuses and society. How do you see this playing out? Well, I, I think these divisions are going to continue to fester. The hatred is going to be continually inflamed. Uh, and, and one of the things that we see the communists have been trying to do in this country for generations is actually foment division 
for division's sake, right? As the Bible says, a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. The more issues they can divide Americans on, the more issues they can fracture our population on, the easier it is to take over. But I think what happened in Israel, and, and there are obviously very real questions about how these terrorists were able to infiltrate one of the most secure borders on the face of the planet. Uh, I've been in communication with people, current and former, from IDF, intelligence, uh, suggesting that something catastrophic had to have happened here to allow that to happen. This is one of the most heavily guarded borders borders on the planet is filled with every kind of sensor you can imagine. Uh, but all that aside, uh, we have a very similar problem on our southern border, which is not defended at all. And we have now, we know, uh, they, they've been caught repeatedly. I've spoken with uh, some of the top leaders, former from the previous administration on Border Patrol. We've got special operations troops coming in from the People's Liberation Army. We've got jihadists coming in. We've got people who are on our terrorist watch list. Uh, what just happened in southern Israel, I think, could be a foretaste of what we can expect in this country if we don't put a stop to this. And as we've seen with these demonstrations in our cities, there's going to be a major faction of the American population that will likely side with the people who hope to destroy this country. So uh, we are in great danger. Israel is in great danger, and people need to understand that there's so much more going on behind the scenes than what we're seeing and than what's being reported in the media. And you mentioned we could be seeing something similar playing out here if we don't stop it. So how do we stop it? Well, I think the first an obvious thing that needs to be done is the border needs to be brought under control. Um, somewhere on the order of six to eight million illegal immigrants have flowed through that border that we know of just over the last few years of the Biden administration. So step one is stop the bleeding, get that border under control immediately. Uh, we need to track down all these people that have come across the border, find out exactly what's going on. Anybody who doesn't belong here, who's not here legally needs to be expelled. Uh, this is potentially a catastrophe in the making. And I do believe it is an existential threat to our country. So we We've got to get on this right now. And the House of Representatives in Republican hands has the opportunity to force the issue in the upcoming budget fight. So let's hope that uh, Republicans will take their responsibility to our Constitution and to our national security very seriously as we move ahead. Alex Newman, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me.